coffee's ready. It's getting cold. Bob? I'm coming. I made it ten minutes ago. I don't know why I bother sometimes. <laughs> Where's that list? Oh, Bob, could you bring the Christmas card list? I've left it on the dressing table. Yes, yes, yes. Well, it's 20 past ten already. I'll never get it all done. It's murder in town on a Saturday. Your coffee's cold. I don't know why you asked me to make it. Thelma, you've known me for long enough to know that I can't stand conducting a conversation when I'm in the lavatory. <laughs> Where's the list? What list? The Christmas card list. Oh, God, never mind. When I'm in the lavatory, it's a very private thing. But you're in there for hours, Bob. Only on Saturdays. <laughs> a man's entitled to linger in the lab on a Saturday. Saturday is the one day you and I have a chance to do things together. You're not coming in there with me. <laughs> you knew I wanted an early start. Look, I've got more presents to buy this year than ever before. Now, what are we getting your mother? Oh, something for the house. You always say that. It's your stock answer to everything. No, it isn't. <gasps> I must get little Angela next door something. Angela. She's very into dolls, isn't she? Well, get her something for the doll's house. <laughs> I'm sorry, darling, I'm sorry. It's only a joke. Do you intend keeping that beard for Christmas? What? Are you still going to have that beard at Christmas? Why? Who do you want to give it to? <laughs> Could give it to your mother, I suppose. It's my mother I'm thinking about. You know how it upsets her. And I don't want Christmas Day not to be a nice day. Is she coming here for Christmas? Bob, do you never listen to anything I tell you? We're going there. Oh, are we? We're going there for all of Christmas Day. And then in the evening, we're going next door to the Nortons for charades. Same as last year, then? Same as last year, yes. Didn't you enjoy yourself? Oh, we had a lovely time last year. I couldn't stand all that charades nonsense. Mm, well, you are the world's worst player. I am not. It's all right for you. You had an easy one. Great expectations. Piece of cake, that. All you've got to do is kick the fire and make out you're pregnant. <laughs> what did I get? The AA Continental Handbook. <laughs> shouldn't have tried to do continental all in one. I did a good enough mime. You were also thick. What did you do? Continental. Maurice Chevalier. Continental. Ho, ho. Ho, ho. <laughs> I do hope you're not going to be as boring at the Nones as you were last year. I wasn't boring. I was just bored. Well, I'm surprised they've asked us back. Christmas night full of food. I just want to sit in an armchair and watch the box. Great Escape was on, wasn't it? Usually is. <laughs> We'll have to give the Norton something, add them to the list. Oh, it never stops. You're not going to drink that coffee, are you? Stone cold. Well, I'm not making fresh. Didn't ask you to. Well, are you ready? Yes. I've only got to put my shoes on. <sighs> are you buying Terry a present this year? I suppose so. He never gets you one. Yes, he does. He got me a goldfish in 1962. <laughs> it was in a bowl and everything. If he'd put some water in, it might have been alive. <laughs> Put him down, but I think it's madness. He won that goldfish by throwing three darts in three separate playing cards at a fair. I wonder how long he'd been dead. <laughs> Still, the bowl came in very useful. My mum kept her homemade chutney in it. You haven't even seen Terry since Easter. Hardly. Well, have you thought about what you're going to get him? Look, I want to get it all done by this morning. Well, he's not easy. What do you buy the man who has nothing? <laughs> You know that leather goods shop opposite the bus mm. station? Now, they've got some nice men's travelling manicure sets for under two pounds. A manicure set? For Terry? That's like... That's like getting Gordon Honeycomb a set of silver hairbrushes. <laughs> well, all right, Terry's your department. <gasps> I know what else I want. Invitation cards. For what? We're having people in for drinks and Boxing Day morning. Oh, well, as long as it's early, Boxing Day morning. Not too early, why? Well, it, it's just that there's <clears throat> there's a match at uh, Boxing Day morning. There always is. It, it's traditional. But we agreed that we'd have people in for drinks and Boxing Day morning. Did you, darling? We were, we were going to have it on Christmas Eve, but that clashes with Dan and Kathleen's fancy dress party. Fancy dress? Oh, Bob, you never listen to... Anything I say. We discussed it last week when I said you weren't going as Maurice Chevalier. Oh, Christmas Eve fancy oh. dress. Dan and Kathleen. Uh, that Dan and Kathleen. Look, all these things have got to be thought about. There's choosing the cards, there's the presents, there's costumes, invitations. There's so much to get through. I know, Thelma, I know. And it's only September the 28th. <laughs>
Well, I think we've done very well. It's only half past four. Yes, another ten minutes, the game will be over. Well, you can miss a silly old game for once. Just think, everything's bought. Mmm, just in time. There's still a few odds and ends, but I can get those any time, pet. Thelma, there's Terry, look. What? Look, in a car, driving. Heavens, yes. Hello, kiddo. Hello, Bob. Uh, not now, eh? Whose car is that? Is it your friend's? Do us a favour, will you, Bob? Get stuffed. Oh, that's <laughs> nice. That is nice. I haven't seen you all this while. Did you hear that, Thelma? Let's not have a coarse argument in the middle of the high street. Well, what's up with you, then? I'm in the middle of me driving test. <laughs> I'm taking me driving test. <laughs> He's taking his driving test. I never knew he'd had any lessons. Oh, you must have put him off. Look, he's stalled. <laughs> That's not very nice. He's taken his test. Oh, here he comes. Sorry, we must have put you off. I, I didn't realise, a friend of mine, I haven't seen him for a while. How's he doing? Look, just lay off, will you? It was our fault he stalled. You won't knock any marks off for stalling, will you? <laughs> See, I've stopped now and I've been driving for years. Don't forget, make those hand signals very clear. <laughs> Just call around to see how you got off. Oh, look, I'm sorry. We didn't mean to put you off. It was just such a surprise. Never mind. Not many people pass the test first go. I did. <laughs> you what? Oh, fast. No thanks to you and Thelma, though, but... Well, I'm amazed. I mean, well done. Congratulations. I'll buy you a pint, then. All right. Hey, can I drive? What? You? Drive? I've just passed me test. Well, yes, but... Ah, uh, just to the black horse. Where's first? Now, careful with the clutch, it can be very fierce. <laughs> Two pints, Jack, please. Maniac. Who? You. Had your licence five minutes, you think you own the road. Just got to move on, that's all. Don't judge everybody by your standards. You drive like Mary Poppins, always have done. <laughs> I drive with due care and attention towards other road users. How did that examiner ever pass you? He's given you a licence to kill. I have attained the standards required by the Ministry, and that's all that matters. Come on, sup up. How much is that, Jack? No, oh, here it is. My shout. Oh, cheers. I'm drinking with reservations to your newfound status. You've been very crafty about it, haven't you? I didn't even know you were having lessons. Well, I haven't seen you for ages. Well, hardly my fault. We're on the phone. You only have to pick up a phone. Well, you were on holiday and I was away. You know how it is. You've changed, you know. I was beginning to think you'd never notice. What is it? I've changed the colour of my eyeshadow. <laughs> no, I noticed that earlier. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, there's something else, I... <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, I've just seen it. <laughs> when did you grow that? Well, probably the same time you were having your secret driving lessons. All right, come on, come on. Get all the remarks out the way. Ah, looks good. Pardon? Suits you. Looks good. Oh. Thelma like it? Uh, sometimes. Her mother doesn't. On the other hand, I don't like her moustache. <laughs> Makes you look more, uh, you know. Yeah, that's what Penny said at the office. 
Who? You know, Penny at the office. Oh. I've been going out with a Penny. Have you? Aye, can he, lass? Was there the tortoise to drive? Oh, lucky to find a girl round here with her own car. Not many lasses round here got their own car. Well, she's not a girl. More of a woman, 27. Lots of women have a car. And a husband? Ah, oh, she got one of them and all. Oh, you're not. No, 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 no. They're separated. Oh, I see. Well, as good as. What do you mean, as good as? He's on an oil tanker in the Persian Gulf. <laughs> you can't get more separated than that. Dear, dear. And is the hapless mariner aware of this liaison? The liaison didn't last that long. Long enough to learn to drive. Oh, aye, that was fantastic. Every weekend, we used to go to this deserted airfield past Morpeth. Oh, I know the place. I used to practice there. Did you? Yeah. Good place for it, isn't it? Oh, it's ideal. And after which, she gave us a driving lesson. <laughs> I took a few official ones just to learn all this rubbish, you know. Oh, I'm sorry, mate. Careful! Well, there's no harm done. I lost my cherry. <laughs> Not before time, is it? <laughs> oh, nothing, nothing. Now, give us another cherry, will you, Jack? It oh, doesn't you. matter. You're a cheeky so-and-so. Ah. There's no harm done. And they are not rubbish. <laughs> what on? Hand signals. Oh, I think you've I'm sorry. Careful, mate. pet. Sorry, can I, um... Never mind. Sorry. Would you two lads like to sit down? Yes, yeah, sure. Rest our legs. <laughs> Try resting your arms and all. <laughs> <laughs> They're not an important hand signals. Get away. You don't use hand signals after you've passed your test. Who drives with a window open in this country? What you do now you got your test? Oh, get me on wheels. That's the next step. Oh, I reckon I could get a second-hand car by Christmas. Or a job that provides one. A job? Yeah. You mean working? You? In a job? Yes. What sort of job? Well, there's lots of things. Such as? Well, I'll tell you seriously what I wouldn't mind doing. Driving a juggernaut to Belgium. Why Belgium? Well, that's where they go, isn't it? Not necessarily. I saw one this morning going to North Shields. <laughs> yes, but they go to Belgium first, don't they? And all over. Down those autobahns. Hitchhiking floor lines and Swedish au pair girls on their way to the south of France. Nobody's going to entrust you with a juggernaut. <sighs> Good life, that. Your own master. Freedom of the highway, no bosses, just the open road. What about punches, eh? I can just see you on the hard shoulder jacking up a juggernaut in the pouring rain. <laughs> Doesn't rain much in Italy. Oh, we're in Italy already, are we? <laughs> we got through Switzerland quick enough. Well, you've seen the way I drive, kid. They go fantastic distances, you know, these juggernauts. Yugoslavia, Turkey. You went to Turkey on your holiday, didn't you? No. Well, you said you were. You showed me the brochure. We did not go to Turkey. Mind, when we left the Elm Lodge housing estate, we were certainly on our way to Turkey. What happened then? The charter company, Venture Travel, whose brochure assured us of a holiday of a lifetime in the capable hands of the world's most experienced travel agents, went bust. No. Yes, we paid in advance, of course. When did they go bust? while we were in Luton Airport. <laughs> there was considerable speculation and confusion. Rumours were rife. That's why we spent three days in Luton Airport. Dear me. That's why I grew a beard. Why? There's nothing else to do in Luton. <laughs> it's not the fun capital of Europe, despite what Eric Morecambe says. So you just went straight home, then? Would that we had. Instead, we tried to salvage something of the holidays by renting a car to see something of the beauties of our own countryside. We started with the natural grandeur of Bedfordshire, which was closed. <laughs> closed? It was Sunday. We looked for Woburn Abbey, but we never found it. Well, how could you miss it? Isn't it full of lions and baboons and such like? We'll never know. I was foolish enough to follow one of those signs which said alternative route. When you've been driving a while, you'll learn to ignore signs that say that. The alternative route turned out to be Newport Pagnell, where we spent <laughs> Sunday night. It was a terrible night. It wasn't Newport Pagnell's fault, but it's not easy to gee your wife up in a motorway motel when you both know that at that moment you should be eating green figs overlooking the Bosphorus. What's the Bosphorus? What? It's a river. It's a river in Turkey. The River Bosphorus. Isn't it? <laughs> I'll tell you next year when I'm there in my juggernaut. <laughs> we won't get our money back, of course. For your holiday, you mean? No chance. I said to them, I said, we'll have to tighten our belts. Oh, definitely, she says. And you should have seen her this morning with the Christmas shopping. Christmas shopping in September? Yeah, she doesn't like leaving things to the last minute. Dear me. I don't want a present, mind. I don't want a card and I don't want a present. I'm not sending cards or presents this year. What do you mean, this year? <laughs> you never do. What? 
I've not had a present from you since 1962. And that was just a goldfish. What do you mean, just a goldfish? That's a canny enough present to give anybody that. Their own pet. <laughs> How is he? How is he? <laughs> he was dead on arrival. Oh, dear. Maybe I shouldn't have had him gift-wrapped. Can I drive back? No. Ah, oh, go no. on. No! You're too cocky at the moment. All that success has gone your head. All that adrenaline pumping round. Just the time you'll have an accident. Well, you're not having one in my car. I may drive like Mary Poppins, but I've got a scratch-free car and a no-claims bonus to show for it. How's it going, then? The job? Oh, come off it. Not what I expected, is it? The open road. <laughs> the open yard. Why did you take it, then? Because there was nothing else. Oh, I thought once I got me driving licence, you know. Nothing? Well, there was a few things, delivering bread or builders' merchants, but I wanted a job where I could get the use of the vehicle, where I could take it off overnight. And weren't there any? No. Well, there was one, so when I took it, only stuck it for a week. But it wasn't the sort of vehicle you could pick a young lady up with and sweep her off her feet in. What was it, a dust cart? <laughs> it was an ice cream van. <laughs> an ice cream van? I think your chances of pulling a bird in an ice cream van were wafer thin. <laughs> no, seriously, though, weren't they? Well, better than in a... Forklift truck. Well, never mind. At least you got a job, which is bringing the money in, which will see you through Christmas. Well, what's Christmas got to do with it? Well, we all need a bit of extra money at Christmas. I mean, it's Christmas. I don't. I hate Christmas. As far as I'm concerned, Christmas doesn't exist. You always say that. I mean it. It's all got out of hand these days. It's just one big racket. Oh, sure, once upon a time, it was a meaningful and joyous occasion. Certainly. Once upon a time, there was a real spirit of Christmas. About the time King Wenceslas set out. <laughs> on the Feast of Stephen. What? Good King Wenceslas last set out. On the Feast of Stephen. Well, you should know. You were the carol singer. Yes, I was. Of course you were. You never minded making a festival twit of yourself. <laughs> no, I didn't mind. Trapes in the streets with that boring bunch of Presbyterian ping-pong players. <laughs> I didn't mind at all. I loved it. Sloppy sentimentalist. I know, I know. I know, I know, I know. But there's nothing wrong with being a sloppy sentimentalist. I'd rather that than a sour-faced cynic like you. Christmas is nothing but a confidence trick by big business and department store owners. Look at people like your Thelma. They start Christmas shopping in September. Same again, Jack. And two shorts, big ones. People overeat, overspend and over-sentimentalise. I know, I know, I know, and I love every minute of it. Even the terrible things I love. I love last minute shopping, with your arms full of parcels, trying to find your car which you couldn't park, which is now covered in Yuletide parking tickets. <laughs> That's all right. I love spending too much, doing silly things, wearing daft hats, being nice to me deaf Uncle Billy. I love those terrible old movies on television like Son of Sinbad with Tony Curtis and Piper Laurie. I don't even mind Leslie Crowther in a children's ward. I can even take Rolf Harris. Good God. <laughs> and I like 
like eating too much Christmas lunch and Christmas pudding and mince pies and tangerines and dates in those boxes with eat me on the lid. <laughs> and I like everything cleared away by five to three so we can settle down and listen to the Queen's Commonwealth Address. Here you are, then. The Queen. And good King Wenceslas lass. <laughs> if you say so. Oh, you got me a double. I can't stay long, mind. Oh, I see. Isn't part of Christmas mellowing over a yuletide noggin with your mate, then? Well, yes. But we were going to stir the pudding tonight. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when we were at school, you were the last person in the whole class to admit that there wasn't a Santa Claus. Yes, yes. And who was it told me there wasn't? Well, it was for your own good, Robert. You were 15. <laughs> I was six. I remember the day vividly. Christmas Eve afternoon it was. Sitting in our back kitchen in front of the fire. Reading Lord Snooty in that year's Beano annual. I'd got it early. Because the week before, I'd been crying a lot. With a boil on my neck. Anyhow, there I was. Couldn't have been happier. Not a worry in the world. Except how Santa was going to get a fire engine down our chimney. And you show up with an evil, malicious grin on your face and said, Santa Claus is dead. <laughs> I did not say that. I said he'd never been alive to begin with. No, you didn't. You said he'd been gored to death by his reindeer. <laughs> well, you had to know sometime. I hadn't known since August. Quite, quite. That's the point of my story. You knew in August. But you wait till Christmas Eve before you told me. Even at that tender age, you were filled with cunning, malicious spite. John Webb told me. Mine, I'd suspected it the year before, when my mother told me that Santa Claus was bringing us a fort for Christmas. And in November, I found it in the iron cupboard. <laughs> I needed Santa Claus more than you, being an only child. You had two sisters, uncles and aunts. Your house was always full of raucous revelry. My mother and I all spent Christmas very quietly with my Uncle Billy and that aunt from West Hartlepool who smelt of camphorated oil. <laughs> yeah, well, there won't be much raucous revelry this year. Well, you'll be spending Christmas with your folks, won't you? No, they're going to spend it with our Linda. Yeah, but you'll be going with them, won't you? No. Why not? Wasn't asked. You don't have to be asked, surely. Linda's your sister. Look, Linda's got her own life. She's got three children and a husband who's an idiot. <laughs> What about your Audrey, then? Well, she doesn't want me around there, does she? That's awful. I mean, normally you could have come to us. But we're going to Thelma's mother's. Look, I'm quite happy on my own. I don't want to go anywhere. But it's Christmas Day. Well, as Christmas Day doesn't exist in my book, what difference does that make? What will you do, then? What will I do? I'll have a good lie in. Go down to the Fat Ox for a game of Doms, come back, watch the box, pull a cracker and open it in a pork luncheon meat. <laughs> That's terrible. So pathetic. Pulling a cracker with no-one at the other end of it. It doesn't bother me. I just wait from Boxing Day when some semblance of normality is resumed and Newcastle play Carlisle. As I say, normally you could have come to us. Yes, I'm all right. I can manage. Like tonight, I can manage on my own. What do you mean, tonight? Well, you're not staying here, are you? You're off home to stir your pudding. There's <laughs> no mad rush. Ah, uh, well. S same again, please, Jack. Doubles. Oh, well. well certainly doubles. I got doubles in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fine. But after this one, I must definitely get back. I might be drunk, but I'm not irresponsible. I'm not irresponsible. Quite right, quite right. I'll drive. No way. I'm not giving you the keys. If I give you the keys, that would be irresponsible. irresponsible. I shall walk, or at least stagger home. But it's four miles. Oh, wait, give us the keys. No way. There's no way these keys are leaving my hands. Oh, wait. <laughs> oh, God. Get me home, Terry. Don't worry, kiddo. 
I'll get you home. in that tone of voice. I simply called to tell you it's five to eight and you order the minicab for eight. I can't find my earrings. <laughs> I told you, I've got them. He never listens to anything I say. Well, where are they? <laughs> Sit down, I'll put them on for you. Ow! Oh, that hurts. Don't be such a baby. There. This hook's no good. I should have got a real hook from the butchers. You can't go to a party with all those people with a real hook. I don't think you should even wear your cutlass. And I should have got a parrot. Captain Hook didn't have a parrot. There. Oh, you look very good. <laughs> At least people will know you're Captain Hook. But will they know I'm Peter Pan? Of course they will. Oh, I don't know. I think this is a bit of a nothing outfit, really. I mean, I could just be a pixie or an elf. Oh, all right, what's wrong with being a pixie? Well, I want people to know I'm Peter Pan. Well, fly in through the window, then. <laughs> like you did last week, I suppose. Now, Thelma, <laughs> Thelma, come on now. I thought we'd agreed that subject is closed. Yes, well, just don't make rude remarks and it will be. Oh, come on, pet. It is Christmas Eve. All right. <laughs> oh, that'll be the car. I'll just nip upstairs. You get it, pet. <laughs> <laughs> Terry, come in, come in. It's all right, Thelma. Sorry, Terry. I, uh, I haven't interrupted anything, have I? How do you mean? Well, you know, you read about these things, and uh, <laughs> not exactly your work clothes, are they? No, we've got a fancy dress party. I'm oh. Captain Hook. Oh, I see, I see, yes. Hey, that's very good. Shouldn't you have a parrot? <laughs> well, apparently he didn't have one. Ah. Oh. How's things with Thelma after the other, uh, you know? Well, they've been a bit, you know, but everything's, you know, now. Oh, good, good. I lost my job. You did? How? I didn't wake up next morning, by which time the forklift truck had been reported missing. <laughs> I'm sorry. Christmas week and all. Ah, well, Christmas doesn't bother me. I've got another job anyhow. Oh, hello, Terry. Merry Christmas. Hello, Thelma Pet. Why, that's a canny little outfit, though, but... And what are you going as, an elf or a pixie? <laughs> She's Peter Pan. Anyone can see that. Well, Terry, we'd offer you a drink, but we're just off, you know. No, 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 I'm not drinking. Not while I'm driving. What are you driving? I'm driving you. I'm your minicab. <laughs> arrange with you. 
your firm to pick us up as well? Yes, I know, I know. Will it be you again? Probably, probably. All oh, right, we'll settle up then if you like. Yeah, if you like. Uh, right, two o'clock then. Uh, we won't keep you waiting. All right. Oh, come along, Bob. Well, go on. Have a good night. Yeah, you too. Oh, that's silly. I mean... Uh, don't worry about me. You enjoy yourselves. What is it? Captain Hook. Oh, that was him, was it? <laughs> well, excuse me. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. Bob? Bob? Hello, darling. Who have you got in here? Pardon? Why were you in here with the door locked? Oh, no, 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 it's not locked. No, no, there's an act to it. Are you with that Sylvia? Who? Sylvia Braithwaite. Well, that's Sylvia, Joan of Arc. Yes, that's Sylvia, your ex. <laughs> well, yes, you could say one of my old flames. <laughs> you could say. <laughs> no, no, the last I saw of Sylvia, she was with Harry with the Wake. No, she's not. Harry with the Wake's fast asleep on the staircase. What makes you think I'd be with Sylvia? Because I know you after you've had a few glasses of that punch, it goes straight to your loins. And you go on the prowl. <laughs> <laughs> and Sylvia Braithwaite's not a difficult girl to find. This party's getting out of hand. They always do. I know, I know. Happily married couples that we've known for ages. As soon as the lights go down, they all swap partners. Then all that furtive kissing and buttock clutching mm. goes on. Do you know, Brenda Boyle's next door with Nina Smith's husband. Uh, what's his name? Rasputin? Yeah. I don't know what Brenda's Allen would think. Oh, he's not bothered. He's in the garden shed with Marie Antoinette. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> eee. Well, I hope we don't end up like this. Mind you, darling, you were on the dance floor for a long time with whoever's in that tiger outfit. Oh, that was only Eric. Nevertheless, I bet your bottom is covered in claw marks. <laughs> well, he's an animal, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> You see, you shouldn't go around with your aspersions about me. No, I'm sorry, darling. But what were you doing in here? I'll tell you that, Thelma. I'll tell you that. I was looking out the window. Because he's there. Who? Terry, look. What? Well, he's early. That's not our fault. That's not the point. I mean, just look at that little hunched figure in a gabardine mac. <laughs> and it's Christmas Eve. It's just so sad. Well, it's embarrassing him driving us, but there's nothing sad about it. Look, he was the one who wanted to work over Christmas. And another thing. What? Should I tip him? Look, I've really no idea. Well, I suppose so. It's so embarrassing. Oh, come on downstairs. We miss the hot dogs. Can Perhaps we just ask him in. Not for a drink. For a hot dog. Oh, well, all right. Look, I I'm going to the bathroom. I'll see you downstairs. Behave yourself. <laughs> You can come out now, Sylvia. <laughs> Terry, you all right then? Oh, terrific, yeah. I've got a rotten book and eat that's packed in. You're a little early. I know, I know. I'll wait, sir, at your convenience, sir. You enjoy yourself. Oh, I'm not enjoying myself. I'm definitely not enjoying myself. It's a rotten party. Um, so I thought perhaps you'd like to come in, uh, warm up a bit. Go in, like. Yeah, you could have a hot dog. Well, I'm hardly dressed for it. Eh? Gosh, you are. So you've come as a minicab driver. <laughs> hot dogs, eh? Yeah, and lots of crumpet. Right. <laughs> All right, then. Oh, I think i just get a bit of fresh air. All that punch, you know. Oh, boy. Oh. All right, then. You can come out now, Sylvia. <laughs> 
Terry, would you please take me home? What? Oh, sure. Oh, I'm sorry if you're having some. No, 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 it's quarter past. You're entitled. Where's Bob? I'm not waiting for Bob. You can come back for him if you like. That's up to you. Where is he? God alone knows. I've searched this house from top to bottom. I found his cutlass in the bathroom, but you haven't seen him, have you? No, no, not since he asked me in. I know who he's with, and I know exactly what he's up to. Who is he with? Sylvia Braithwaite. She's in a Joan of Arc costume. I don't know where they can have got to. Have you tried the top of the bonfire? <laughs> It's a bit late, so oh, I'm all right. Oh, have a hot drink or something. Oh, well, all right then. <sighs> Would you like a proper drink? It's your last job, isn't it? Unless I go back for Bob. Oh, I'd rather you didn't. I've got all his keys and money in my purse. Let him walk home. In them boots. Serve him right. Well, in that case, I will have a proper drink. Um, scotch? Oh, good. Here. You might as well have your present. Oh, I told you not to get me a present. Oh, Merry Christmas. You're driving me home. I can't do that. I am not walking home. I can't just drive you home. It's not my cab. Car, cab. Well, your wife asked him in for a drink. He'll be in there half hour. Yes, but... Uh... All right. Well, where are you going? It's a mini cab, isn't it? I'm going to get the driver. I'll drive you home. Terrible time I've had. On the floor, under coats, in a flower bed. I've been bent double all night. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's still in me cab. <laughs> We found the stolen minicab SHN 439F abandoned at the corner of Preston Road. Unable to apprehend the driver. Well, it wasn't our fault. He ran off over this waste ground. Shall I open this, then? Well, it is Christmas Day. He shouldn't have bothered, you know. I mean, I wasn't expecting it. I told him, I said to Bob, look, I don't want a present this year. Because... Oh, look at them. Driving gloves. Well, it seemed appropriate. We didn't know what to get you. Oh, they really are very nice, Thelma. Oh, you make me feel rotten now, not getting you anything. Of course, if it was up to me, I'd let you off the fare tonight, but... Oh, um... Terry, yes, of course. How much is it? I mean, if it was my own car, I... <laughs> no, 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 no. Come on, now, what do we owe you? Well, normally it would be five pounds, uh, two ways like, but uh, as one was after midnight, that's 6.50. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for 75 pence waiting time. Of course, it is Christmas, but that's entirely up to the individual customer. Uh, I'm afraid I have nothing smaller. Oh, I don't think I've got anything. Um, oh, never mind. Didn't... As you say, it is Christmas. Well, that's a very handsome gratuity, Thelma. <laughs> and I do appreciate the gloves and all. 
Well, you need those for the job, won't you? I think I'll keep the job long. Second night out and I've lost the rotten cab. <laughs> Pardon your fault, Terry? Well, I shouldn't have left the keys inside, should I? Just my rotten luck. After I'd behaved myself and all. Unlike some. Guess who? So, I'll have a run. I mean, I mean, walk all the way home. Merry Christmas, kidder. Merry Christmas. Why did you go without me? Why did you leave without me? Well, don't look at me. I'm just a driver. I do as I'm told. Thelma? I'm amazed that you noticed I'd gone. I searched high and low for you. Oh, yes. I did, I did. <laughs> and he stepped outside for a breath of fresh air. You saw me, didn't you see me step outside for a breath of fresh air? Well, yes, yes, that's true. Of course you did. It was that punch. I just wandered round the garden till my head felt better. Then I got back inside. Of course, there's no sign of you. Nor was there any sign of the tiger. However... Well, Bob, look, I assume... Yes, obviously. You're very quick to jump to assumptions, Thelma. Uh, 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 thanks for the present, kidder. They're, uh, they're a good fit. What? Oh, good. Yes, right. Happy Christmas. Happy Christmas. But you weren't with Sylvia Braithwaite. Oh, Thelma, what is the point? What is the point? If you've got it into your head that... Well, I've got nothing to say. I mean, what can I say? I've got nothing to hide. Hello. There's a car outside. Oh, good, it's the police. What? Well, it must be to do with Terry's car. It was stolen, you know. Ah, well, I, just, I, I think I'll just go and get out of these ridiculous clothes. Oh. Well, I'll let them in. Mr Collier. Oh, yes, he's through there. Mr Collier. Aye? We've got your Christmas box. You found it? Aye. Why, that's quick work. Uh, must have been a joyrider. Enough of them about Christmas Eve. Did you get him? No, he scarpered when he saw us coming. What was he, uh, just a kid? Hard to tell in the dark, like. Uh, oh, well. All's well that ends well. <laughs> would you like a drink, Constable? Oh, it is Christmas and I'm off at six. Good lad. What would you like? Brown ale, if you've got one pet. Uh, Terry, would you get it? Please? Certainly. Bob! What? Come on down. Why? Well, we're having a Christmas drink. Oh, good, you've got it. Well, cheers, mate. Because you got me out of the clouds tonight, I can tell you. Cheers. And after this, I'll uh, run you down to the station, if you like. You can pick the cab up. Well, don't you want to dust it for fingerprints? Uh, look for clues, like? Oh, we found a clue. Aye. We, uh, we found uh, this on the back seat. <laughs> <laughs> well, happy Christmas. <laughs> Thank you.